Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my Zone 7A Garden in St. Louis, Missouri. All right, I am Naomi, and today we are going to be propagating some what? Some hydrangeas? Yes, we are. All right, I actually started the process about five weeks ago, but I want to take you with along with me to show you how, uh, how we do it here, right? All right, now normally propagating is not something that I do because it takes too long, right? I'm an impatient gardener when I see a plant and I want it, I want it now, stop it. All right, and so what I normally do is I normally divide my plants in order to get more. So for example, these beautiful limelights that you're seeing in front of you, like this one right here, this is actually two limelights, I kid you not. I purchased one and I divided it into two. They grew beautifully together. Um, they grew beautifully apart, I mean, in their nursery pots for an entire year. And this season, I potted them up <laughs> in the same container. I know you're like, Naomi, he divided them to put them back together again. Listen, I needed to get all of the nursery pots out of the off of the driveway because my driveway is my storage area for all of my plants. But it is also the front of the home, so we have to keep it looking kind of cute, right? Okay, so um, being short on decorative pots, I ended up grouping, planting them together in the same pot. But we are able to separate them if I decide to plant them out in the landscape. But if you can see, you have one plant right there and there is another right here. Yeah. So that's normally how I get them to multiply my hydrangeas. I divide them. All right. But um, I ended up propagating, trying my hand at propagating because guess what? I got this extremely confident and extremely optimistic. And um, instead of attempting to divide my hydrangeas in two, as I normally do, I decided I wanted to make one three. Can I tell you? It did not work, people. I was able to get two beautiful plants. But when I went in to cut the third section, whew, I ended up cutting off an entire branch of the hydrangea. I felt so sad, so bad. I left the cutting on the ground. It sat there for at least an hour or so while I potted up the other two that I had su su successfully divided. And then all of a sudden I turned around and looked at the cutting on the ground. It was getting a little wilted and I was like, you know what, Naomi? Why not try your hands at propagating? Yes. Why not propagate this hydrangea? I was like, okay, I have nothing to lose, right? I already have the cuttings on the ground. And so people, I did. Right? And five weeks later, guess what we have? Look at Look down there in that box behind the begonias. Yes, people, five weeks later we got hydrangeas. Stop it. All right, we've got some beautiful hydrangeas growing, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I propagated them. And we are going to go ahead and pot them up right now into some four quart containers. Okay, so it is recommended that when you're taking your hydrangea cuttings that you take them early in the morning when the plant is beautifully hydrated and unstressed, right? This is it's supposed to ensure that we have more success with cutting with, with our cuttings rooting. Uh, it is now, what time is it? It is about 6 or 30 in the evening, people, and I'm taking a cut, I'm sorry. This is one of my limelights right here. All right, this is a beautiful uh, stem. It has no, um, what's that, no buds on it. Hold on, let me see if I can see a better, even a better one, because this one has a little curve in it. I'm going to have a curved cut. Let's see. Ah. We should be able to work with it. It's just for the purposes of this video to show you how we would take the cut in, right? So you would cut from your hydrangea, you're going to cut right below a leaf node. I mean, let's take it as far down as I can because I'm going to get as many cuttings as I can from this one stem. All right, there we go. All right, so when you have your cut in, as we do right here, we're going to let's see, let me see how many cuttings I can get from this one section. I think I can get four, right? We're going to cut right below the leaf node. And normally, you'd like to take your cuttings before. I'm not sure if you can see it. Do you see a little browning on this section of the stem? This is about as far along as you want to take it um, for this sort of propagation before that stem turns extremely brown and hard. And um, this might be a little too short for me to propagate. So I'm going to go, my first cutting is probably going to be right here. So I'll cut my first cut in right here. Okay. My second one is going to be right here. Ooh, and there are little flies out here. And I guess we're only going to get three. I'll take my third cut in. I'll shorten this one right here. It's a little long. 
I'm going to end up making this my third cut-in. All right. Ooh. There is a little fly that is just running around. We will remove the first set of leaves right here because this is where the roots are going to form. And then we're going to spare the cut in all the stress of having to support these leaves. And we are going to cut these leaves in half. In this case, they're really small, so we'll just cut them in half. All right, mommy. All right, and that is one cut in. Pop this in some water right here. Woo. All right. This is another one right here. There are so many little flies buzzing around me right now. Oh, man. If you hear me, if you see me keep fanning my hands, that's why. They know I don't like them and they keep doing it, right? All right. And again, make those leaves half and into the water. And then for me, what I did, the only medium I had available was perlite. So I use my perlite and I also use these plastic cups because I'm so impatient. I love to see things grow. I love to see roots develop and the plastic cup allows me to see them more readily than if I had them in a, um, anything darker. All right. Woo. These flies. People, these little flies, these little flies. All right. Filled my cup with some perlite. And I like to moisten mine before I put the root, the cuttings in. Ooh. I should mention that I do have two nice little holes at the bottom, right? So that the water can drain. So we've got our cup with perlite, right? I then added the cuttings directly to the perlite. Now I do not use, and I have never used rootin hormone. I am told that rootin hormone will help to speed up the rootin process. Right? But for the cuttings that I'm going to be showing you, that we're going to be potting up today, I did not use any rootin hormones, people. All right, this is number three. And there it is. We've got our three cuttings nicely placed in the moistened perlite. All right now, I did not use any sort of humidity dome, all right? No sort of covering, no, no Ziploc bags or anything. This little cup is going to go with me under the hydrangea that we just took it from, where you saw the other hydrangeas that we're now going to pot up. All right, so let's do a little switcheroo right here. This section of the garden that I'm in right here on our front, we do get morning sun and afternoon shade. So it's almost perfect. Plus the covering of this hydrangea does provide a bit more protection from the sun. Right, so our babies should be happy right here. Hey, right. and this is the process that I used to propagate these guys about three, you know, five weeks ago, five, almost, yeah, five weeks ago. All right, now let me get them here on the table and we'll go ahead and I'm so anxious to do this, right? I want to take them out of the cups so that I can see what we have in terms of roots, right? Ooh, and I know we have roots because I am seeing some leaves develop. All right. I've got one more. <sighs> Here we go. And we are going to need some pot and mix. Now I did my own. If um, this is the first time that you're meeting me, I like to mix my own soil, right? Or mix my own soil concoction. It is recommended when you are um, taking your rootins from whatever rootin medium you have them in. For, so for example, for me, for the perlite, and I'm going to pot them up. Um, it is recommended that you use a really high quality potting mix. People, I made the best high quality potting mix I could think of, right? My potting mix is made of garden soil, peat moss, perlite, and a little bit of earthworm castings, and some cow manure, 
That's right. All right, so this potted mix should have all the love that our plants are going to need in order to make it to the next phase. Let me go ahead and get the soil in the containers, and then we're going to start shaking off, getting these guys out of the perlite to see what kind of roots we have. I am so excited. All right. All right, here we go. So let's start potting up our cuttings. Now, these cuttings, they were taken on May 5th. And normally, if I'm going to do cuttings to propagate so that I can plant them in the ground the same year, I'm in garden zone 7A, normally 6B. I take my cuttings right around uh, late to early June. That gives my cuttings six weeks to do their rooting. From there, they're going to be potted up. They get another six weeks in their, um, in their pots. That's going to take me right to about uh, late August, September-ish. Once my summer temperatures have started to cool, I should be able to go ahead and transplant these guys from pots into the ground and they should have enough time to settle in and be happy before the um, winter months roll in, right? Okay, drum roll people. Let's get on to the um, taking out these plants to see if we've got roots. And listen, they're sturdy. Uh, and look at this. I can see the roots. I don't know if you can see it. I can see roots, people. All right, look at this. And I also can see Japanese beetles. Stop it, these Japanese beetles. All right, let's go ahead and get some out here. Let's see what kind of roots we have. Hopefully, we have a lot of roots. I'm going to wash them off in some water. All right, this is a big guy. All right. We have a little baby. Like I said, when I lost that, that branch, I felt so bad. Every little piece of stem that I could make into a cut-in became a cut-in. So look at how teeny this is. I guess it would not be recommended that you start this teeny. But listen, I didn't want to waste a bit of plants. And look, I do have some roots. You seen it? Right? So this is going to get her little container. Let's see. Let me shake off another one here. Shake, 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 shake. Ooh, this one rooted beautifully. Look at the roots on this one. I would have liked if my roots were a little bit longer, but I'm hoping that this is going to be enough, right? For our cut-ins to now root in soil. Number two. And let's just check one more. Let's check one more, people. All right. Shake it off in the water here. One second. Shake it off. Ooh, people. And we got roots again. I cannot believe this. I rooted plants, people. That propagated me some hydrangeas. This feels so good. Wow. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and show you how I would pot these up. Okay. We would make a small hole. Oh, well. So that I'm not going to be damaging those roots once I put them in. I'm going to put the cuttings in right at about where they are, where they were, in the perlite. So that all those new roots are covered with the soil. And for this one, I'm doing one per container because now I want them to take off as individual plants, right? Because I do want to hopefully pot them, plant them in the garden. And there is our first cousin, all potted up and ready to go. We're, of course, going to have to water these. Even this little baby, no, no plant um, left behind. It's going to get its own little container, and we're going to see what it does. Look how teeny this is. <laughs> all right, um, poor little baby. My little baby grew, though. My little baby said, I don't know, I'm little, but I'm Talawa, right? I'm Jamaican. It's a phrase that we have there. Jamaicans say we're little, but we're Talawa. This is my little Talawa hydrangea right here. All right. Being very gentle so that I do not damage any of those new roots. Let's get another one in here. This one looks so good. Look at those roots on that one. So good. And look at the new growth coming up. Can you see the new leaves? 
Look at that. What? All right. All right, just getting these potted in here. Again, being as gentle as possible. All right, look at this, people. We got plants. All right. When life gives you lemons, they say make a lemonade. Love it. We made us some lemonade, people, and I'm loving it. All right, let me take a few minutes just to pot up the rest of them so that I can show you what they're looking like. Um, we'll get them watered in. This teeny little baby. Oh, but she's going to grow. See, she's going to be the biggest plant in the garden. Can I tell you? The runt of the litter is always the biggest at the end of the day. All right, beautiful people. Look at this. All right, from that one mistake that I made where I cut off a whole branch of my hydrangea and I almost cried, right? We actually got 10 potential plants. I kid you not. Look, every um, piece that we cut actually rooted some rooted more so than others right some more so than others but they are all planted up here and they are ready to do another six weeks in these containers i will keep them in the shade right so exactly where i had them where i showed you them mommy, under mommy. the under the mummy hydrangea that's where they're going to go today they're going to go back um under that shade and they're going to stay there for another six weeks i'm going to keep them watered um keep them nice and moist and then hopefully, as our summer temperatures begin to dip, I'll be able to plant these guys out into the landscape. Isn't this beautiful? All right, but take a look at just one more up close and personal. We actually propagated some hydrangeas. All right, and again, hey, now listen, I got to mention it just one more time. This is not a proven win winner-sponsored video. Listen, these are leftover nursery pots that I have from my annual purchase this season. Purchase annuals this season, I have a habit of storing my containers. So luckily I had these containers on hand so that I could use them to pot up these hydrangeas. I'm taking my cuttings, putting them back. I need to give them some water to make them fat. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. Let me get my water in, can you know? Do my little dance and sing and so.